Well, hello and welcome to Travels with Jordy. How about that? Snow in Victoria. I do get snow once or twice a year and frankly, I just love it. So this week we're going to carry on with the hanging locker in the aft cabin. I'm not sure how much further we'll get along with it because it's a pretty big project and I want to take my time. Listen, if this is your first visit to Travels with Jordy, my name is Peter and I live here in Victoria, British Columbia where it's not always snowing with my pup Jordy aboard this old wooden motor cruiser which we're restoring for some pretty serious cruising someday. So if that's the kind of thing you might be interested in, why don't you consider sticking around and subscribing? We're going to have a hell of a lot of fun. And we're back at it. For those of you who haven't been following along, uh, I'm in the process of building a hanging locker for the aft cabin of my wooden boat here. And these are the four panels that will make that up. Uh, this, the two side panels will be fixed. The two center panels are the doors that will open up with a curved head on them, which is what's making it complicated. Now, theoretically, I can take apart this jig and build the panels one at a time and confidently feel that they'll all line up again when they're done. <laughs> okay then, so now I gotta start cutting out the panels. So what I'm gonna do is I lay out uh, one of the, when I say the panels, I mean the plywood panels that fit inside. So if I lay out the frame on here, I can then measure what the panel will be inside. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. I measure the inside and I add a quarter inch in each direction. A little more than a quarter maybe. At the top I'm going to say three eighths. Eight and three quarters. Forty and five eighths. Uh, Thirty nine and seven eighths. Gotcha! And that should be the same for panels A and D. Uh, but I think I might do a little extra measuring just to be sure I won't put you through it. Okay then, after much fiddling and fettling, I have confirmed the sizes of the four panels and happily, they are symmetrical. A and B, C and D, they all work out. So, now let's cut some panels. Okay, to do that we gotta get that plywood up here, and which means all this has gotta get out of the way. Suddenly, the boat seems awfully small. Okay, this is going to be a combination of hand. Anyway, let me think about how I'm going to do this and uh, I'll bring it back. All right, so the longest panel is 41, so I'm going to cut a 41 inch strip of this. Remembering I have to keep the grain vertically in the panel, so I'm going to cut it out of four panels out of this. And 41 down at your end. Straight edge. There. We go. I can't reach out to turn it. <laughs> Again, because these cuts end up a quarter of an inch inside the mahogany rail and style, it's not super critical that they're perfect. Not that I'm suggesting there'll be anything less than perfect. Eight and three quarters. <laughs> Um, annoyingly, uh, this makes it a right hand, left hand, the wrong way around for me to cut easily. So I gotta work this way. Happily, I think I'll be able to catch that. Yeah, this will all work. Okay, let's go. Yeah. One. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, I had actually gone to some effort to try and keep these together uh, so that I could make them grain matched or book matched. Well, not book matched because that would be book matched, but at least the grain sort of lined up. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I, yeah, I've often wondered about that actually. I mean, obviously, there's something elegant about book, ma book matched or grain matched panels, but does it actually make it more beautiful? I'm not gonna get too wound up about this, you know? It's gonna be just fine. Okay, so what the other thing that these things have in common is that none of them are the right size because they need the tops, if we call this the tops, um, cut uh, not into a curve, but at least a straight line approximating a curve because that'll fit up into the headpiece. 39 and three quarters. Excellent. 
Now, the smart feeder would put this in a panel right away to make sure I'm not having a cutting measuring incident. So let's do that. Because I'm being the smart feeder today. A. And there's the head and there's the bottom. Let's see if we can get this to sit in here. Now this will sit in really well because these are the MDF panels which fit in a little loosely. That will go in there. That will go in there. And that will go there. Beautiful. Hey, hey! That, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to pick it up, is the first dry fit, not dry fit. Do you know why it's not dry fit? Because I haven't put the splines in the uh, mortise and tenons and I uh, got in a lot of trouble last time. But anyway, I'm going to say it's the right size panel. That's all that matters. So I'm going to cut the remainder of the panels. Yeah, I'm starting to get pretty excited. I'd like to get at least one panel glued up tonight and uh, maybe three tomorrow. <laughs> Perfect. All right, so here we go. First glue up. Although I love gluing up, I also hate it because it's the last chance you can screw anything up. Okay, so first thing I gotta do is get the splines in, right? No more fooling around. Good. Okay, great. So now, Fill the grooves. In we go. Excellent. Now, of course, it fits in really well. So I'm going to do a little slidage. Lots of glue in there. Okay. Which is going to go right here, right there, right there. The bottom rail, here, here, there. The other side, can't let this hang around in the air too long, or it'll dribble glue everywhere. But I can put that there for now, tip it down, get it relatively lined up anyway. Now, clamping with, at least with these urban clamps, I can't clamp right on the bench because they'll roll them up a bit. I have to be able to put the force dead center on these little hinged pads. So what I have to do is put the whole glue up on a piece of wood that raises it up like so but still keeps it all sort of in alignment that'll do for now that'll do for now very good we're gonna check for square wow pretty good okay let's take these up Okay, look for squeeze out. Obviously, there's going to be some. Let's clean that up. Ooh, this is looking pretty nice. Joints are super nice. Super nice. Okay. Now, that should be sitting reasonably flat. Um, again, a proper bench to do glue ups for panels would be great. But these panels are all held in place relatively well. The door is a little less so, so, eh. All right, we're gonna call it a day and uh, see what this looks like tomorrow. Cheers, good night. Good morning. Um, if I've ever been smug about living in Victoria and the warm weather, this is time for me to eat crow. It's been snowing for two days. We're supposed to get six inches later this evening. And this is a long extended freeze, which in an environment that is not used to freezing, it's a bit difficult. The marina is a good example. All the water on the dock is frozen, um, helping some people deal with some stuff. My boat is okay because I have a recirculating hot water loop. Basically, I take I have a small valve with the hot water heater that sends hot water back through, wrapped around the water lines in the cockpit and into the fresh water tank, meaning it circulates and stays warm. That works pretty well. I have no protection for my holding tank, so I just 
um, emptied it and can't use the toilet in this period. But I mean, on the whole, I'm doing pretty well. Um, the water on the dock is frozen, so I can't top up, but I'm doing pretty good. Anyway, uh, it's pretty. <laughs> anyway, lots of fun. Okay, let's get back to work. So we did the first glue up, and I am amazed how beautiful this turned out. The joints are perfect. It is tight. It is square. Let's get this one off and uh, glue up another one. And we have lots of other stuff we need to do. Okay, here we go. This looks like it turned out really, really nicely. Let's pop these clamps off. That is our first panel done, and the joints are absolutely beautiful. Feeling pretty good about this. Uh, yeah, let's glue up some stuff. It almost seems dull to do another glue up. We have more interesting things we could do. You know what? I think that's actually the case. We still haven't built, I say we, because I think of you as being part of this, Still haven't finished the base section, which is I think what I'll do today because I have a reasonable amount of working time and as soon as I do a glue up, the bench is tied up. So let me get set up for that and I'll bring you right back. All right there folks, well, you, some of you will remember this, which is the front of the lower section of the um, hanging locker. In other words, a hanging locker only has doors in the top two thirds of it. Below that, for various reasons, it's a uh, fixed cabinet with um, a void down below. Okay, um, if you've been following along, you know I just glued this on the other day and there's a bunch of uh, stainless steel pins coming through and the pins were only there to hold it while it glued. So let's just get those off. Oh, tighten this right up here. And I'm going to take them off just by pulling them right through the back. Teeny, tiny, I don't know if you can see them, stainless steel 23 gauge pins, which if you've been following along, you know I am very fond of. But I don't like leaving these around and I don't want to lose them into the build. Or in other words, onto the floor, which will eventually end up in the build because they're stainless steel and they won't rust away. They'll just sit there till the end of time. Can't pick them up with a magnet either. Okay, so these have to go straight into the garbage. Okay. All right then, so this panel, as I said, is the base and it has, it'll has have side pieces that will connect it to the bulkhead. The bulkhead is sloped at five degrees and if you remember, I'm tipping so you can maybe see in here, so there'll be a panel here that comes back to the bulkhead, a panel here that comes back to the bulkhead, and there'll also be a panel about here because if you remember, only the um, port side Three quarters of this actual total unit is hanging locker. The remaining quarter is actually a, not exactly a hanging locker, but I'm calling it a wet locker from the companionway side so you can hang a coat or whatever as you first come in. But the face um, facade of it looks as if it's all one cabinet. Anyway, we'll see if that sort of makes sense. So what I gotta do now is make these panels possibly all three. They're gonna be made out of half inch uh, Sapelli plywood and uh, they have a bevel at the back to match the bulkhead, pretty straightforward. So I'm just gonna cut them square at the point and put them in and scrap them against the bulkhead. I, you can guess what I'm up to, I'm pretty sure. First things first, getting at the plywood. Happily, these pieces are getting smaller and smaller. I don't know if that's happily because it's expensive and I need lots of it. Uh -huh. Okay, let's do some measuring. Right there. I'm gonna have to mark this off in three because my straight edge won't go that far. People wonder why I have a level on a boat, largely just as a straight edge. You know, it's funny. A lot of people probably think it's absolutely shocking that I use a bunch of Rubbermaid totes as a bench, but you know, it's remarkably effective actually. It's easy to adjust the height um, with enough material in them. They are heavy enough that they absorb a fair amount of vibration. You can remove my little bench, therefore have an area you can cut in between on the whole. They're awesome. The plastic doesn't mar wood, which is what I do when I bring the plywood up. I think on the whole, not a bad solution, well, for living aboard a boat. Okay, <laughs> keep focused, Peter. What, what, what's my dimension? Hmm. Okay, folks, I hope you don't mind. I just went back into the aft cabin and scribed the slope of the uh, bulkhead. So I'm gonna cut that out of these two panels together as one, because I'm fully confident that that'll be an okay thing to do. And of course, I'm gonna clamp them together with, I just love that. Now, these are going to attach 
to the um, front panel of some cleats or some ledgers or some little screwing blocks. Basically, a piece of three quarter by three quarter mahogany that'll run down and allow me to screw plywood to the face of it. How about I just show you? You know, it's funny, every time I have to make a ledger or a cleat or whatever you want to call this, I have to cut it out of wood that I consider scrap, but I'm always thinking there's something smarter, better, more important I could do with it, so I sort of loathe to do it. But anyway, let's let's get these cut. Hello, old friend. You don't have a great view, but I'm sure you've seen lots of. You know, you couldn't say it wasn't a winter wonderland. It's kind of a neat place to work. Before I drill all the counterboards, I'm going to chamfer one corner of it for a couple of reasons. When it's all built and I'm looking down into my, well, this is to be the base of the wet locker. It'll look a little tidier if these are slightly chamfered. Another thing it does for me when I'm assembling it, it's really easy to tell which is the inside or in this case, sort of outside corner. And I can start lining up my, um, putting my screws in because I'm going to put the screws in at an angle more of that later. But anyway, let's just put a quick chamfer on these. I don't know if you can see that, it's just about an eighth of an inch. Very nice, woo, love it. So when it comes to the actual counterbores, you can see this is the edge I've chamfered. This is where I'm gonna have one panel and this is where I'm gonna have the other. And of course, the screws from here are gonna screw into both panels to make a strong connection. Um, because there's going to be a panel here, when I put a screw in this direction, I don't want my knuckles to be bashing against the panel and not making a good connection in the screw. So I slightly angle them in. So another advantage of the chamfer is it's really easy for me to remember, go close to the chamfer and slightly leaning towards it. In this direction, close to the chamfer, leaning slightly towards it. Is that a lot to put in to just a simple cleat? I like cleats. Now I'm not going to be um, plugging these because these are effectively inside the cabinetry. I don't mind seeing them. Plus there's the potential that I'll have to take this stuff apart in the future. So I'm not going to worry about it too much. So in the opposite direction, I'm going to go offset by a little bit. Okay, I'm sure you've seen enough of this. All right, we'll just do these a quick, very quick little sand. Just some of the bits aren't all over the place. All right, these are ready to go. Yeah. All right, folks, well, while you were off getting your battery recharged and your memory card uh, downloaded, I assembled this end of the uh, base cabinet. So uh, now you can join me for the assembly of the other end. Um, what I have here is the base piece, which was the top of what we call the plinth, and I had already installed it in the aft cabin. Um, but it was only temporary to make sure it fit because it becomes an integral part of this, uh, which is a box that sits down on it. Never mind all that, let's just put this end on. So you can tell I'm going to put the cleat in the corner here, but before that, I'm going to attach the bottom edge to the end grain of this ply. Not very elegant, but perfectly acceptable. All of this is a dry fit. It'll all come apart because everything here is going to get sealed all four sides. Okay, so let's put this together. Before I get too far, I just want to put the square on the inside. Make sure this is reasonably square. Wow, good enough for me. Okay, and now the cleat. to uh, put the cleats at the back edge, which will attach all of this to the bulkhead. Beauty! And that is ready to be attached. We're gonna go do a dry fit. Uh, you wanna come? Okay, let's swing this in place. Okay, that goes down onto there. And then it slides along a little further and down and in. Oh yes, I love it. 
that is the base of the hanging locker. Now, the next thing to be done here is to put a nosing piece, basically a piece of one by by about two, uh, all the way along the top edge here. That does a couple of things. It gives me an aesthetic bead. Uh, it also creates a delineation um, and a structural, a little bit of strength in this direction, a connection around here. And I think that'll really set that off quite nicely. So we gotta make that up. I saved you the tedium of setting up the quarter round, uh, 3 8 quarter round bit in the router table, which I'm gonna use to put a bullnose on these pieces which are gonna go around the top of that base part of the cabinet. So two 3 8 quarter rounds equals one 3 quarter bullnose. Should we get on with it? get uh, the first miter cut going on here. Again, I'm a bring the saw to the wood type of guy, so no chop saws on this boat. Okay, well I would say that is a mirror smooth little miter. Um, something else that people have asked me, um, you know, about tear out in this wood, and I have to say, between the amazing blades uh, that were gifted to me, and the fact that this wood is just very, very, very tolerant, you get almost no tear out even if kind of sloppy angles like I came off the edge of that if this was spruce my gosh it would just be a big feathery mess but it's lovely to work with this stuff and the other all right looks pretty good to me okay let's start to take some actual measurements off the base cabinet and get these attached all right then so I've been back I've made some measurements and the interesting thing about this particular cut is it's got to be at five degrees like this because uh, the bulkhead is sloped at five degrees. Uh, we'll call that five degrees. Excellent. I'm gonna go see how that fits against this piece here and I'll come back and let you know. Now the astute amongst you or those with really good eyes will have noticed that this piece isn't long enough. It wasn't long enough to put a miter on the end and that's because I do not have a single piece of uh, sapella mahogany left over long enough to do this. So I've ended up putting a butt joint here and I've uh, rounded over the end of the piece here. This whole area will be hidden behind the bench that I'm gonna build here in the future, so I'm not worried at all. Well, hello, welcome to the beer of the week. I can't say I'm completely over my head cold, but well enough that I can enjoy a beer that I've been looking forward to for a couple of weeks. We're going back to Spinnaker's, which is my local, and it's their Bourbon Black Lager. And Spinnaker's is just about 10 minutes down the path here on the waterfront. So it's my local, it's a fantastic spot. So I like to try everything they have. I'm interested to see what this is actually like. I've never heard of a black lager. Let's see, it pours, well it pours pretty much like a porter, maybe a little bit lighter, so we'll see what we think. Alright, <laughs> I'm managing to pour it without a ridiculous amount of head, so let's see if we can add a little right at the end there just for show. Alright, well, let's see what we think of uh, Spinnaker's um, Bourbon Black Lager. Just um, a dark beer. I wondered if the bourbon was to suggest it was um, a cask beer. It's not actually, but it's uh, it just is a, it's just a nice dark beer. Yeah, it's nice. Well, I do want to thank um, two new patrons this week. We have Richard Dossett uh, from Patreon and uh, Eden Ustrich, which I hope I pronounced properly, uh, from the uh, PayPal. And both of those, um, there's a link to down below if you'd be interested in supporting the channel. Thanks again to you both. Cheers. And that brings us to the word of the week. If you'd like to win a Travels with Jordy t-shirt, leave the word sunshine. Yes, sunshine, because it's a beautiful day. The word sunshine down below in a comment, and I will uh, pick it random from the first 24 hours worth of comments. And if I pick you, you're going to get a Travels with Jordy t-shirt. See you next week. Cheers. Mm. That's okay. Oh, this is nice.